Mark, uh, thank you very much for joining us. The administration making this push right now on the USMCA, trying to get it through Congress. So right now, what is the main selling point to Congress in trying to get this vote moving? Well, thanks for having me on this afternoon. Uh, the deal that the president negotiated with Mexico and Canada is a better deal for Americans. It's better for dairy farmers because it provides new access to markets in Canada. It's better for auto manufacturers because it requires a much larger percentage of it to be manufactured actually in North America. It's better for laborers because it sets a, a minimum wage uh, for for laborers here in North America. And so I think in a lot of ways, it actually benefits a lot of traditional Democrat audiences and constituencies. When we talk to Democrat members of Congress quietly, I think they support it. The question is whether or not Speaker Pelosi will actually give it a vote. And that's the political concern that I think a lot of Americans have because they believe this deal is better. The studies show that it will generate uh, tens of billions of additional income in trade for the United States of America. It will generate tens of thousands of new jobs in, in the United States. So economically, we think it's good. The policy overall, we think is good. The question is whether or not the politics of investigations and where we are with Democrats in Congress actually stall it from doing what's good for the American people. Mark, I have a lot of sympathy for you right now because I've been reporting where you are standing and that loud protester just outside of the White House is carrying through and I know it's difficult so I appreciate you bearing with that uh, for us. But, you know, I was struck by this because at the Rose Garden today, President Trump uh, said, and I, I wrote this in my notebook when I was there, he said, Mexico is actually easier to deal with right now from his perspective than the Democrats. You talk about the Democrats and making that pitch to them. When you look at the number of Democrats that you think you're going to need to get this through, are you still optimistic that, that Speaker Pelosi will get this voted on ahead of the August recess? Uh, so I think there's a couple different questions there. I think that we were very encouraged last week with the negotiations we have with Mexico, and they made more significant gains in trying to secure our common border than we think we've gotten help from Democrats in Congress. But specific to your question, we think we have enough votes to pass USMCA in the House. We know we have enough to pass it in the Senate. The question, though, is that under TPA, Trade Promotion Authority, Speaker Pelosi has the ability to decide if or when she brings it up for a vote in the House. So the question is less about do we have enough votes? The question is what do you need to do to encourage Speaker Pelosi to actually bring it up on the House floor for a vote, which we think it deserves. And that she's going to need to hear from enough Democrats in her own conference to do that. And that's that's the course of action we're taking. If you look at where the vice president has been traveling, it's in many cases to districts that are represented by Democrats in Congress to make the case for their constituents to call their member of Congress and ask Speaker Pelosi to bring it up for a vote. USMCA aside, Mark, how would you characterize the relationship right now between the administration and the Mexican government? Uh, with the Mexican government, I, I think actually uh, we were very encouraged with the negotiations we had. Last Wednesday, the vice president uh, asked the delegation of Mexico to come to the White House for a meeting to make sure they understood how significant a concern the national security element is to the president of the United States. And what we saw in the next 48 hours was significant movement from them to reach an agreement with us. And, uh, and I think there's a large level of cooperation right now with Mexico. What the president has said today in the Rose Garden, though, I think is that ultimately this is going to be measured by results, more so than the process. In other words, when you saw 144,000 apprehensions at our border last month alone, 100,000 of them of family units coming across the border, the president said enough is enough. This has to stop. So ultimately, the relations will be dictated what actions they take to bring that to a halt. What do you say, Mark, uh, to, to, to the president's supporters and Republicans in his party who they're still with the president, they're not threatening to desert the president, and, and we haven't seen any movement in the agricultural states in their polls, but, but they're concerned about the impact that tariffs are having on their bottom line. Do, is the message be patient? Is it, is it, it, it too bad? I mean, what, what do you say to folks who are uneasy about those tariffs? Well, I think there's an understanding the, um, to the situation that, that many are, are in right now. But if you look at the Midwest, take Iowa, for example, where the president was yesterday, unemployment in Iowa is at 2.4 percent. 
the economy in America continues to grow. And when you see that unemployment in our country at 3.6 percent, under 4 percent for 15 months in a row, it's a pretty phenomenal record of growth okay. in jobs and in manufacturing jobs. So uh, there's a lot to be excited about. The reality is, if you remember last year, the G7, the president said as a starting offer, how about we remove all tariffs and remove all barriers to entry across the table? And that was not a bid that they were willing to accept. So he uses tariffs as a leverage to help try to level the playing field. And he's going to keep doing that to protect American businesses. Uh, looking domestically, Mark, do you see any prospects, uh, again, setting aside uh, trade, where something can be passed on a bipartisan basis between now and the election? Or is that kind of shot? Uh, I don't think it's shot. I'm not that pessimistic. I acknowledge <laughs> that right now we're, we're pretty polarized and, it, and it's going to be hard. But I think there's actually several policy areas where the two sides can come to agreement. Whether or not it's USMCA, it could be drug pricing. There's going to need to be a budget deal passed before the end of this year in order to just keep the government funded. So there are going to be opportunities to come together. I accept that right now it's very polarized, but there's still opportunities from a policy perspective where the two sides can come together. <laughs>